Well, everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Bachman Wireless Easy Command Dynamics DCC system. And this is something I purchased a couple months ago, and I've had it under the workbench for a while. But I got this because I wanted to convert all my large scale models over to DCC. And I looked at other DCC systems on the market, and this one here looked like it would do what I wanted it to, it would be relatively easy to use. Although the couple times I have used this, I've noticed a couple issues pretty much in regards to performance and getting things to work the way I want them to. But uh, go ahead and get this out of the box, show it to you guys. And I just want to say right now that this isn't going to be as much a review as it will be an unboxing because I really can't do a proper review on an item that I've had very little use or very little time using. Uh, it's sort of like going out and buying the latest cell phone and doing a review on that right after you take it out of the box. I mean, how much do you know about it? So one thing I wanted to mention about this Dynamis system is that I purchased it off of eBay. I got it practically new from a guy that purchased it with the intention of building a model train layout, but just never got around to it. So this is seen maybe about one-time use, but... I paid about $200 for this. The unit itself was $175, but by the time I had the cost of shipping, it was $200. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the cost and getting this unit to work. But I'll go ahead and show you here what's all included in the box. So to start off with, there's some paperwork in the box. I uh, got a warranty card here. I don't believe I could send this in because this unit was bought used and it didn't come from a reputable retailer. But also here's a information sheet on Bachman's one year warranty for their products. And also the Easy Command Dynamics user's guide. And real quick, I wanna give a big thank you to the seller that I bought this from because they apparently misplaced this uh, user's guide and it wasn't until I contacted them through eBay, they uh, did a search around their house and they were able to find this and send it to me at uh, no additional charge. So big thank you to them. eBay definitely needs more sellers like that. But also included, we got uh, Linyard uh, for the handset. There's also a wire for, well, I think there might be a couple wires in there actually, for connecting uh, the control box to the track. Also, I believe in the box here, if I can get a hold of them, uh, got some alligator clips and also looks like an adapter to connect uh, the wires to the control box. Also got some batteries here. I'm not going to bother taking those out, but these are the ones that came from factory. I believe this is the uh, plugs into the wall. Yes. And lastly, close, uh, got the... Contro no, command station as they call it. And uh, I'll show you guys this a little bit closer, but got that and also the handset here. But uh, yeah. So the first thing I'll show is the handset and I put a 12 ounce soda can next to it here so you can get a size comparison and see that this unit's actually pretty small. But I'll say right now that the handset has a good feel to it. Uh, got a bit of weight and uh, it fits well in the hands but uh, it's powered by four AAA batteries they're under these covers here these just unclip and uh, look on the back here you can see some of the information on the Dynamis handset and to turn it on there is a switch on the bottom of it here and also a spot here where you can attach the linyard but I'll go ahead and turn the unit on. You'll see everything lights up. Bachman Dynamis by ESU. And some of my DCC models are already programmed into this. Right now you can see it's set to locomotive number one, Thomas. And uh, right here is your throttle. Uh, direction right here. Uh, that's your emergency stop. All these buttons uh, do whatever, uh, depending on what's on the screen. And here's your... Uh, command numbers here and uh, control for lights and whatever this button does. <laughs> but uh, as soon as I get this uh, dynamic system set up, uh, I'll show this in action. Now this here is the command station and on top of it you've got the receiver which basically just plugs into it 
And I believe these command stations are set up to where you can stack them on top of each other or plug uh, other hardware into them. Uh, there's some information on the bottom there, basically just in regards to the FCC rules. Uh, on the back, you've got two jacks here, one for power, one for track, and there's also an outlet here to plug in probably that adapter. Now, on the receiver, you've got the infrared LEDs, but I know there's also LEDs in here that uh, indicate power and also that the unit is getting signal uh, between it and the handset. But I think I'll go ahead and set this system up now and we'll run some trains. I've set up some track on the workbench here and the next thing I'm going to do is hook up the dynamic system to it. And the first thing I'll do is take the wall outlet and plug that into the power jack on the command station. And for the track power, I've pulled out the Bachman connectors that I use for my large scale track and I attach the wires to the adapter piece that came with the Dynamis and that just gets plugged into the command station as well. And I'll go ahead, now that all that's connected, I'll take the wall outlet and plug that into this extension cord I have here. And you should notice two LEDs come on. There's a green one and an orange one. The orange one means it is searching for a handset. So uh, go ahead and power that up. Now when I turn on this handset, the yellow LED should stop flashing. There we go. Now when I push this emergency stop button, power should be applied to the tracks. There, the sound system just came on for the climax and I can see the lights are on. Uh, currently got this set for Thomas, so if I push this, I should hear his whistle. And if I switch this over to the Climax locomotive, I should get a whistle on this as well. There's... Huh. I'll have to check. I might have the motor turned off on that. Now sure enough, when I checked the switches on that, uh, I had the motor shut off. That's the one downside with analog systems is uh, got to shut the motors off if I'm running multiple models and I have that one on the siding. But if I get going here, I'm going to run Thomas out of his siding now, and to control him, I can either move the throttle left or right and select him, or in this case, I'm just going to enter his address on the locomotive roster, which happens to be number one. And you can see now I have control of him, so just go ahead and run him out here. And go ahead and run them backwards now.
So hopefully you've seen a little bit of what this Dynamis system can do. And really I only showed you a portion of what it's capable of. But I mean it does a pretty good job running these large scale DCC models. And if you want to see a video of just the trains running, I'll leave a link in the description and also on screen right now. You can head over and take a look. But uh, I would say with large scale though, the Dynamis system does have its limits, which is something I'll get into now on some of the faults I've found with this. So one issue with the Dynamis system is that I've noticed signal loss seems to be a common problem. Because in the few times I've used it, what will happen is if I get too far away from the command station with the handset, even if it's just a minimum of, say, 10 feet, and the command station is still in sight, the signal just cuts out. And the same thing happens if I go into a different room of the house, and even if someone or something gets between the handset and the command station, signal just completely diminishes, and when that happens, the emergency stop on the system is engaged, and until the handset comes back in range of the command station, you can't run any trains. And, I mean, there is ways to fix that, but not unless you spend more money. Now, another issue I have with the Dynamis system, and really this only applies to me personally, is that the Dynamis only comes with a 2.3 amp power supply, and that is really underrated if you're gonna be running large scale models, especially if these models have lights, sound, smoke, and if the models have multiple motors, or if you're running multiple models on the tracks at one time. All that is gonna be drawing a lot of amps. Now, Bachman does get around this by giving you the option to go out and get a five amp power booster that they provide but I've looked at the prices on those and one of those boosters is about $300. And I mean, as is, I already paid $200 for the Dynamis system here. And in addition to that, uh, the five amp booster, that's still not gonna come anywhere close to the 10 amp power supply I'm running for analog right now. Now, the last issue I have with this Dynamis system, and it's pretty much the reason I decided to abandon the idea of using it, is that I may have said this before, but I bought the Dynamis with the intentions of using it at model train shows to run the trains, and I wanted to have someone else running the trains with me. And to do that, I had to go out and buy another handset to have a second operator. Now, one of these handsets is around $150, which I don't think is a bad price for one of these. But the trouble starts when you add another handset onto this system, because... With the Dynamis command station right here, the two handsets will actually interfere with each other. And you can get around that by replacing this command station with the Dynamis Pro Box. However, and this is what I really didn't like, the Pro Box is going to set you back around $300 to $350, if not more. Now, taking into consideration, the Dynamis system here cost me $200. And on top of that, to add a second controller is 150. To add the Pro Box is, we'll just say 300. And the 5 amp booster would be another 300, we'll say. So you tack on that money plus the cost of shipping for all that. And you're looking at close to $1,000, if not more, for this DCC system. And, I mean, I just don't see where it's cost-effective for me to use something like that when I'm going to have close to about that much money to convert my models over to DCC. So, at the end of the day, I'm pretty much just going to have a complete DCC system, but nothing to run with it. Now, keep in mind that I am in no way denouncing the Dynamis system. I'm just saying it doesn't work for what I want to do. But if you're somebody working on a smaller scale like N-Scale or HO, and you've got a train layout set up in a room of your house, or you have a DCC starter set, then this might work for what you want to do. But for a larger guy like me working in G-Scale and running trains around the house, out in the yard, on these elaborate layouts at train shows, it's just not suited for that kind of operation right out of the box. But to somebody that's working on a smaller scale, it may work for them. So although I've given up on the Dynamis DCC system, I haven't given up on DCC itself. 
And my plan for this is to sell it off, recover the money I paid for it, and then put that money towards getting the DCC system I'm looking at now. Because the one I found does everything I need it to, and it's at a price I can afford because it's only around $400, and that's not even half of what it would cost me to get this Dynamis system working to my liking. But again, I don't think this is bad. It's just not suited to what I want to do. But if you're somebody that's looking to add DCC to your model railroad, the Bachman Dynamis system would be something to consider.